In this video, we will take a look at how we can work with text in your Lua plugin. And for this video, it's actually a good idea to watch the previous video about local and global variables. Maybe if you haven't watched that previous one yet, I'll just go ahead and watch it. Uh, hit pause right now and I'll just wait right here for you. I promise. So just come back in a second. And you're back. Awesome. <laughs> Um, understanding how to work with text in Lua is very crucial for building plugins because all of your user input will be text and all of the commands that you will send to MA2 are also text. Exactly. So let's take a look at uh, a ton of different little tricks that you should know for working with text. Uh, the code for this video is probably a good place to come back as a sort of a cheat sheet. So. Um, the work with text.lua file is your place to come back and kind of look stuff up. Also, before we jump into the code, uh, one more thing. When you search online for how to deal with text in Lua, replace the word text with string. Um, <laughs> speaking from a computer science perspective, what we're covering in this chapter falls under the category of string manipulation. String in this case is short for string of characters or what normal people would call text. So in this video, I'm going to talk about text, but just keep in mind that when you need to Google something that you should instead look for strings. So instead of Googling, for example, combine two pieces of text in Lua, you would rather Google combine two strings. All right, with that lingo out of the way, let's take a look at the example code and um, Let's just copy and paste this over to the console and then go ahead and run it. And then I'll uh, walk you through the code in just a second and explain what's happening here. So let's start with the fun part first. Control A, Control C, Alt Tap, and then right click. And then let's just call this text. Working with text. Okay. Control A and then Control V. And now let's uh, run it. Hello, what's your name? Uh, Jonas. Hello, my name is Jonas. Why, hello there, Jonas. All right, perfect. Now, the first thing I want you to realize here uh, from these two first examples is that you can actually wrap um, text or strings in Lua in single quotes or in double quotes. This is pretty important for assembling MA2 commands. We'll see in just a second. Um, looking at these first two lines of the examples, though, we can see that the text is both output the exact same, right? So, um, I mean, up here we got the hello world twice, so obviously there's no difference. Another thing that's um, important to note here is that usually when you write text in German, for example, the quotation marks are double quotes and there's a lower double quote in the beginning of the quotation and an upper double quote. So there's some, and this is quite confusing, but there's some, um, there's some characters or some quote types that sometimes will be output by um, programs like Word that are not the correct type of quotes and then Lua will not accept them. You will have to use either the upper double quote character or the upper single quote character. And, um, you know, syntax highlighting is our friend in this case. If we happen to use a wrong kind of character here, then we will know. So this is another kind of single tick character here. And um, this can be a bit confusing, but you can see here, you will get it um, you know, you will know that you hit the right character once um, the syntax highlighting actually marks it as red. All right, that um, is important. Um, if, if nothing else, copy and paste this code. So if you can't get the right, um, you know, quotation marks in there to, to have the, the text be highlighted in red, just copy and paste this code over to your plugin. And then if nothing else, just always keep those little ticks um, in the top of your file with a comment and then you can always copy and paste it. It's probably pretty tedious, but if it doesn't work, there's always a way, if nothing else, just copy and paste the code that I provide you. 
The second example I want you to show you is how you can store text in a local variable. This is actually pretty simple, right? Just like we saw in the previous video, you can simply assign a text as a value to a local variable and then use that, for example, to output it again to the command line feedback window. So we can see here, you know, hello Jonas, and we store this text in here. So if we then, um, you know, call up gma.feedback and um, insert this variable here, then obviously it says hello Jonas. So we should see hello world, hello world, hello Jonas. Let's take a look. Hello world, hello world, hello Jonas. All right. Sweet. Then uh, let's go to the next example where we see things getting more interesting. Um, here you can see how you can assemble multiple snippets of text um, into one new piece of text. And in this case, we're just storing the name of a person and a variable and then combining it with the two dots. Um, so this right here is assembling a new text. And we could also just go here and be like greeting equals this part right here. So, you know, whenever you can input a value into a function, you can, of course, also just store it in a variable, right? So in this case, we can see here we have a text and then we have those two dots and then we have another variable here and that in combination creates a new text um, that we then output. So hello world, hello world, hello Jonas. Hello, my name is Jonas. Let's take a look. Hello, my name is Jonas. Yes, perfect. All right. Now what's important to know here is that these spaces around this these two dots, like they, they are not needed. You could also remove them. I like to keep them in there. Uh, it's just something that I do to make the code a little easier to read. Mm. We'll get back to that spacing thing in just a second. Um, let's take a look at the next example. And here we can see um, how this can actually be useful. Because in this case, we're asking a user to input their name and then proceed to greet them in a highly personalized way. So uh, go ahead and run the plugins a few times by tapping on it. And whenever you enter different name, you can see that a new person is being going to read it, right? Um, so let's just copy and paste this newest version over here. And I'm going to start by being Paul. Hello, my name. Hello there, Paul. And then Mia. Hello, Mia. All right. And then in this last example, it's all coming together to actually be very useful. Um, we can see here that um, we actually are running a command that's made up of, um, you know, part a MA2 command and then this new label that we sign up here. Um, this is actually a little bit too complicated of a example because um, we can see here that we're sort of switching around from, from double quotes to single quotes. Um, and I'm doing that to, you know, essentially just prove a point. Um, what you can actually do to make your life a lot easier is to simply uh, always use single quotes because then it's very easy for you to include these double quotes that you need in MA2 um, macro or in MA2 commands. And um, one thing that's also funny, remember how I told you earlier that these um, spaces in between these different parts of the command, like you know, the spaces around this double dot, they're not so important, right? I only do that for readability. Now, one thing that you will find pretty often, and I do this quite a bit too, is if we remove that one space here by accident. Um, and I mean, this looks fine, right? Right? So let's just copy and paste this code over to the console. And now what we can see is that, all right, rather not say, um, you know, this is not this is not exactly um, what we were, you know, planning to do. So um, this is not really a valid command here because there is no label one quotation mark, my super duper macro and quotation mark. Right. Um, so that's something that I actually have happened. Um, you know, this this happens to me quite a bit 
where I forget to sort of add these um, these spaces in here. So that's basically it for working with text. And um, you know, for for working with text in general, I think there's only just two things to remember. Number one. Um, there's single quotes and double quotes, and you need to use the right characters, if nothing else. Um, you know, you can just copy and paste the code from here if it doesn't work. You can notice that your characters correctly marked up the, the piece of text that you want to use if the text that uh, you defined is marked in red, which brings us back to the syntax highlighting. So if it's red, it's great. And then the second thing that you want to remember is to use the double dot operator um, this can actually help you assemble different parts of text and that's how you can actually combine and create nice commands.